Hello and welcome to our video about um, Norman Hartnell's redesign of police uniform. My name is Kim Bedolf and I work at the City of London Police Museum and I'm joined again by Dr Claire Smith of the Metropolitan Police Heritage Service. Hello Claire again. Hi Kim again. <laughs> um, this is obviously a um, a topic that's close to your heart as you had have some beautiful uniform on display a couple of years ago for the 100th anniversary of the celebrating women in the in the Metropolitan Police didn't you? We did and it's actually the thing that tests my professionalism as a museum person because we have the Hartnell cape and it's the most beautiful garment and I have to restrain myself from wearing it. I, you know, if I was less of a professional, I would be sitting here now wearing the cape because it's amazing. Oh, is it good? So, yeah. oh, I knew, I how, didn't manage to come and see it, which is just terrible. Um, I'll come out when we when we're allowed out. I'll come and see it. So obviously, we're not open at the moment. The the City of London Police Museum has been closed throughout the pandemic, but hopefully this year in 2021 we will be open again. And you can come and see us. And so um, just to show you this map, if you haven't watched any of our videos before, um, to point out that the City of London Police Force is separate to the Metropolitan Police and only um, their, their police area is the City of London, which you can see in black there and um, just pulled out and enlarged at the bottom. Um, so it's this very tiny area in the centre of London, which of course was the original Londinium, the, the Roman city and then of course re-inhabited in the ninth century. Um, the city made sure that they weren't going to be um, looked after by the Metropolitan Police when the Metropolitan Police was set up in 1829 and then they had to set up their own professional police service in 1839. Um, so th the Metropolitan Police area you can see is massive but the city of London Police only look after this little bit here and a couple of the bridges as well. Um, so they have, but they obviously have to work together a lot. <laughs> um, right, but today we're going to be talking about for Women's History Month about this amazing um, event in the 1960s um, where a, a high end couturier designed a police uniform. Now, this isn't the one that was designed, was it? This is an earlier one. No. So I thought it'd be quite interesting to see the one that the Hartnell uniform replaced for the Met. Um, I don't know if it might help if I did a kind of quick intro on Norman Hartnell, if that's, if that's yes, OK. Yes, please do. Um, so Norman Hartnell is, um, he was a famous uh, designer, mainly famous for his association with the royal family. So he designed uh, the Queen Anne Princess Margaret's wedding dresses, the Queen's coronation gown, um, the, the, bright, the sort of coronation gowns for the Queen Mother and the, um, the sort of royal family. Um, he was also hugely successful for celebrities, famous for wedding dresses. Um, he was the first designer to have his own signature scent. So he was the sort of first one of those. He had hugely successful um, uh, designs and couture shop. He design and he was kind of although known for the the queen's dresses um he was also quite cutting edge in that he designed the very chic and very sexy wedding dress that Britt Eklund wore when she married Peter Sellers in in a famous kind of 60s celebrity wedding um and he did have a sort of <laughs> before he got to design for the Met he had a bit of an unfortunate run-in with a police officer from the Met um so during the night before the coronation um he writes in his memoirs that he draped his fashion house um, in sort of ermine and silks to really reflect the design work he'd done for the, the Queen's coronation gown. And mm. he decided that he'd go out and take one of the ermine tails off the building and take it with him for the coronation as a lucky charm. So he went outside in the evening and was doing this and a, a passing Met police officer saw him and thought he was stealing this a piece of ermine and said to him oh you know hello sir what do you think you're doing and apparently Norman Hartnell drew himself up with his dignity and said I'm Norman Hartnell <laughs> to which the police officer said means nothing to me sir <laughs> so he managed to talk himself out of it otherwise he'd have spent the night at her majesty's pleasure not not sorting out her coronation gown 
<laughs> but I just love the fact that he had rather an inauspicious start with the Met um, before mm. he came to, uh, came to design the uniforms. So this is the uniform that the women of the Met had been wearing from the 1940s through to 1967. It's very, very basic, very simple, does what you would expect it to do. But the problem was that a lot of feedback was coming in that younger women weren't joining the Met because they didn't want to wear this. It was seen as old fashioned and outdated. And I think it is very much 40s and 50s rather than sort of 60s look. Mm. And it was decided by the commissioner that if they could get um, Hartnell to design a uniform, it would do two things. It would um, increase recruitment because it would be a modern look, but it would also raise the profile of women in the Met because he's such a famous designer. If you say, right, he's now designing for us, there will be a lot of, of press and publicity. I mean, so much so that it did become an event. Um, you know, the launch in September 67, that it was almost like a fashion show. They had um, police women dressed up, um, if we go to the next slide, you can see that um, it was all staged outside um, Scotland Yard. You know, they got the very, very 60s look going on here. So um, we have the sketches that Hartnell did for the uniform. And I this is this is one of my favourite things in our collection, the, the portfolio of sketches. I love the fact that he's drawn these really elegant kind of couture figures it's almost as if they would be wearing evening gowns they're the mm. elongated very 60s it's kind of that twiggy Jean Shrimpton look yeah. and this is very much you know selling the glamour of the life of a policewoman and as I say that it was an event they had press they had uh, it was filmed for Pathé News it really captured the imagination of the public and the press and it was really, I think um, the phrase the Scotland Yard Press release used was that these would give elegance with authority. So it was very much, look how stylish they are, look how modern they are. And I think what I find quite interesting is the fact that so much consideration has been given to what women wear, when in fact the male uniform didn't change very much at all in mm. you know 150 years. The number of buttons changed, it went from a high neck to an open neck but it was never really thought about in terms of do the men like wearing it mm. it was very much for women's recruitment let's give them something nice to wear and one of the um one of the things it failed to do and I don't think this is a really a fault of Hartnell I think he did what he was told to do which is make a very stylish uniform was that it wasn't really designed for policing the streets of London so while it looks absolutely beautiful, if you look at the cap, which was actually designed by um, Simone Merman, who was a milliner who worked with um, Hartnell, but she also designed for Dior and Schiaparelli and very high end. And um, she would also design for the royal family and for, I think, the Prince of Wales, when his investiture happened, all the royal hats were designed by Simone Merman. It's incredibly sleek and glamorous looking, but it's no protection. So it's a soft hat. So that if you were in the line of duty and, you know, and somebody tried to hit you on the head or throw something at you, you have absolutely no protection. And one of the women who um, wore this, uh, she writes in her memoirs that it was very much, it would look great if you were an air, air stewardess. You know, if you had to just look good while doing a job, it's perfect. The realities of um, policing, it doesn't really help. Um, and as I mentioned, I absolutely love the Hartnell cape that goes with this this uniform. And it's it is identical to the design. It's a very sleek blue material with a silver chain. And um, I when I hung it on our mannequin, the folds instantly fell to perfection. So you can tell this is a really well made, well cut garment. Um, and I say I would I would be wearing it now if I could. But um, one of the women who did wear it is uh, Lois Willoughby Easter. And she writes, um, it was their only cold weather garment, which is not the most 
practical cold weather thing for London in the winter. <laughs> but also because it was um, obviously it's a cape, so it's only secured at the neck on the chain. When they had to pursue a suspect, it would billow around them. And she said, you could see the public looking at you as if you were Batman or Robin as you, st <laughs> as you strode down the street <laughs> with this cape billowing around you. So it's one of those uniforms that looks absolutely amazing, but doesn't really fit the job it was meant to do. And again, Hartnell was briefed to make an attractive uniform, and that's what he did. But it didn't really cover the reality it needed to. And I think the fact that it was replaced quite quickly shows the issue around that. Um, if we go to the next slide, so it was replaced with in, in the early 1970s, oh, sorry, that's a that's a image of the cape being worn, which again shows you how, uh, how beautiful it is, but how impractical. So if we go to the next slide, it's, um, um, I don't think I've got another slide. Oh, that's my fault. I should have included one. Um, but the next, the uniform, the Hartnell uniform was replaced in 1970s. The problem being that if you design something that's very high fashion, it dates really quickly. So whereas it looks great in the late 1960s, by the 1970s, it started to look as dated as the previous uniform because it's so on the edge of fashion that it doesn't sustain. And the next uniform that they went for, it was much simpler. So it was, um, you know, a tunic very similar to the men's tunic, a white shirt, um, a skirt that was a problem because it was almost a pencil skirt. And for those um, women watching, can you imagine trying to do a foot chase in a pencil skirt? Um, but it did show that they, they had started thinking more about what do you need to do your job? Not what do you need to recruit women to, to this job, but what do you need to do this job? And it's taken a while, but we're now at the point where male and female uniform in the police force is virtually the same because they're doing the same job. Mm. So we've lost the idea that us ladies just like a nice thing to wear. It's if you're doing a job, you need uniform that one identifies you and to protect you. And that is that is the main consideration. So I personally find it fascinating that, that the police, both the city and the Met, chose to go to Hartnell and chose to kind of go down this high fashion route. And I think it's actually, whether it was a successful uniform or not, for, for historians of the police, it gives us a real insight into where women policing stood at this time. And it was mm how glamorous can you look, <laughs> you know, how how stylish, elegance and authority. Um, but and yeah, I think it's it's really gorgeous line, but probably not what you wanted on a dark night in London if you were chasing a suspect down the road. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, in the city, of course, it, um, we always lag behind the Met a little bit, I suppose. Um, no, that's I not just fair. like to think you learn from our mistakes. <laughs> yeah, and the same design was with a few changes was actually employed similarly as a recruitment tool um, for the city. Um, so as you can see from here, this is a, these are a series of cuttings um, about the. Um, uh the the new uniform um and the biggest thing is the spots the polka dot police girls as you can see so the change when hartnell came and um designed for the city police um is that uh there was there was this extra special polka dot blouse that was um, used for the for the city police women, uh, which you can see sported by a number of people. Um, on the uh, picture on the left there, um, you can actually see um, Chief Inspector Sheila Jones, who sat at the desk with um, with her polka dots. And in the spot the clue um, uh, recruitment advert, um, apparently that's PC Carol Obertelli. I'm not sure if um, she's also in some of those other pictures there. 
Um, and at the top left of that, um, that picture, you can see the old and the new uniforms next to each other. So you can see this similarly, instead of being cinched in at the waist, like the old uniform, it's got that um, square cut to the jacket. Um, and it's got it's double breasted as well, which I think was a slight change as well, wasn't it from the Met? Yeah, the Mets was double breasted, the Hartnell jacket, but not quite as, I think yours is slightly more militaristic looking. I think it's got more of a kind of military feel to it. But I have to say, I am hugely jealous of the polka dot blouse. <laughs> yes, it was, it was um, really, really quite stylish. And obviously, you can see in some of the pictures on the right um, that um, city police women were able to um, patrol without their jackets on to show off their polka dot blouse. Um, they were also allowed to wear boots. Um, if you look again back at the picture on the left, rather than just um, the court shoes. Um, so when it was winter, they had these knee high boots, which are quite stylish. They had the same um, hat as uh, the Met Police as well, though. Um, you can see in the on the right, if we go back to the right again, um, uh, the picture at the top um, is from the City of London Gazette in 1970. More of these polka dots as our policewomen win back a prize. Um, and this is um, police women who had won the Grace Lucas First Aid Competition Award, which was an annual first aid competition held between uh, the City of London Police, Metropolitan Police and British Transport Police, the women's sections. Um, so um, the team are from left to right, Jennifer Hines and Jessup, Paula Kent, who is the uh, captain receiving the trophy there, Dorothy Turner and Pamela Mays. And Pamela Mays, um, on the, the, the last lady in uh, polka dots, uh, was actually the first City of London policewoman to clock up 30 years um, on the job, um, which is uh, really quite cool. Um, she, um, in fact, contemplated joining the Metropolitan Police, but her mother told her to try the City of London Police because they had a different and more attractive uniform. Oh, it obviously worked then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, um, uh, they obviously, I mean, they were they were using this hugely as uh, a massive recruitment tool. And on the next slide, this is um, a se there are a series of, of recruitment leaflets that were put out, walk tall in the city. Um, the one on the left there is the original one from 1970 uh, with WPC Kathy Birch in the uh, main starring role for that one, um, showing all of the different things that the City of London policewoman could get up to. And we saw her, um, saw her in the previous video, if you um, have seen that on the history of women in the City of Met Police, um, in her uh, accommodation at Wood Street Police Station. Um, and it does show that um, down at the bottom, you can see she has the power of arrest, but also she's, she would still be specifically expected to look after um, children and women if they come into contact with the police. Slightly later in the 70s, though, you can see um, this uh, in the centre and the right picture on the right, um, a new walk tall in the city uh, leaflet, which was recruiting both men and women. Um, and you can see a little change to that uniform, I think. Um, and again, it's that hat. Um, you can see that it's been um, changed to the white and blue hat instead. Um, and uh, this was, I can't, I don't, I'm not entirely sure exactly when it happened because I haven't got a date for the, uh, for the press cuttings, but um, they were they were chosen uh, to replace those bucket peaked caps for the navy and white trilby hats, hostess style hats, um, 
And it goes on to say that um, the City of London policewomen are already known as the trendiest in the country. Uh, they wear polka dot blouses and wet look court shoes. <laughs> and they'll be among the first to have the new hats. Um, they talked to a couple of uh, uh, policewomen, or actually there was a cadet. So it must have been after 1973 because, of course, um, women weren't allowed to join the cadets until 1973. So Pauline Tibbs, age 18, said they're much more comfortable and far more feminine than the old hats. Um, and then they asked a passing postman, Steve Lamb, who's age 28, who said, now that's what I call striking. I'd shut up the lot of them if they'd let me. So great what, 1970s uh, um, uh, attitudes there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um WPC Anne Jessup says everyone likes them much better. They're just like air hostess hats. Um, so, and at that point, there were 25 uniformed policewomen in the city, as it um, as it says. And they were that's right. They were hoping to have them ready for October, ready for the Lord Mayor's show, so all the women police officers could look nicely and in their air hostess style hats. So, uh, but the um, I believe that the Norman Hartnell design stayed for the City of London Police for a bit longer um, and uh, to the definitely to the late 70s, if not into the 80s before they were changed, actually. Although I'm sure that people can uh, can um, correct me if I'm wrong there. But this is um, we've got one of those old hats and a tunic and a handbag in the museum. Uh, but we don't have a pocket up blouse, which is oh, such a shame. That's a real shame. It is a shame. Um, uh, and what I wanted to show is actually on the right there, um, if this is uh, a panel from the old, old museum when it was in Wood Street Police Station. And we didn't bring this whole panel, but we brought some of the truncheons. And uh, the women's truncheon that was specially made to fit inside the Norman Hartnell handbag is the bottom right, you can see it's about half the length of a normal size truncheon and um, was really not prized by the City of London police uh, women. Um, and again, I've got uh, that, a story from one of them that says that they knew someone who put a brick in their handbag so that it actually had some weight and they could use that as a... <laughs> Um, as, a, as a weapon we had uh, we we had the same thing so a, a smaller truncheon for women actually they didn't design it new they um it had been used by cid male officers so that if they were in plain clothes it fitted inside a blazer pocket so it's, it's only about that big um and yeah so they just gave them to the women then and they could go in the handbag because of course if you're in a situation where you need a truncheon you'll have time to stop and open your handbag and get the truncheon out and then use it but it's so small that somebody is virtually sort of this close to you before you, you can really do anything with the truncheon. Um, when we had the exhibition in 2019, I put one on display and it was it was a favourite. But some of the press got hold of it and decided to advertise the exhibition having lady truncheons, which is oh an dear. unfortunate way of putting it, I feel. Yes, yeah, so that is. Um... Yeah, I mean, we have, uh, again, we did some interviews with some of the um, retired police officers when the museum opened. Uh, one of them was Belinda Harding, who's an uh, MBE now and um, uh, spent um, 35 years, I think, in the City of London Police. Um, so uh, it's a wealth of, of knowledge. And when she started, she used, she wore these and um, this uniform, this Norman Hart, Hart, Hartnell uniform and said that the truncheon was as useful as a chocolate teapot. Um, but the handbag, so it was hardly worth having, but the handbag did have a radio in it and that was more useful than the truncheon as a weapon. <laughs> um, she says that they didn't have trousers until the, the 80s and when the women had trousers they couldn't wear them on their own with a jumper, they had the, to wear them with a great coat um, and uh, when she first started she did think that the uniform was lovely and very good quality but not practical at all um uh and then uh oh yeah she tells a really funny story about 
the handbags because they weren't allowed pockets like you know normal police officers and keeping things in pockets and pockets especially on the tunics and things like that um or trousers or skirts <laughs> so that the handbag was uh um had to have you know the radio and the truncheon in and so on um but um at training school uh, Belinda wore the handbag on the left because you had to salute with your right hand but when she came back from training school and went out on the beach she put it on her um, right shoulder um, because that's the way she usually wore it but when she was out under instruction she started to salute um, a, an inspector who was also a woman um, and they managed somehow to get their arms entangled in both of their um uh handbags because belinda was wearing it on the wrong side <laughs> um which they luckily it was just a laughing matter and not a not disciplinary <laughs> um so yeah i mean obviously a beautiful uniform amazing um thing to have norman hartnell design it for both police forces and he did design other uniforms as well didn't he for nurses and so on yeah there's um, a great scene in, in Call the Midwife, I think it's the second season, where one of them goes to the Royal London Hospital and is seen wearing this most amazing uh, sort of Norman Hartnell nurse's uniform and made from saying to her, you know, you should be more appreciative, it's practically couture. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, but perhaps couture is not the best thing for when you have a job to do, as you say, Claire, where the uniform has to uh, not only say who you are but also protect you and provide all of the things that you need to do your job okay. um so now it's just a museum piece but uh, hopefully when we reopen you should be able to come and see it and i think if anybody has a polka dot blouse they should absolutely <laughs> get in touch and donate it to the collection <laughs> yes yeah, so we'll uh, we'd have to talk to the police who still own the collection um, and see see what we can do about that. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the um, couture end of police uniform and uh, details of how to get in contact with either Claire at the Metropolitan Police Heritage Service or with us at the City of London Police Museum are on the screen now. Thank you very much, Claire. It's been lovely to talk to you. There's some Always very lovely. funny stories about these uniforms. Thanks very much, Kim. And uh, look at our other videos that are um, all available on the Visit the City YouTube channel. Thank you. <laughs>